are going flying with Samaritan Aviation, and uh, Mark is the CEO and founder. Uh, tell us what made you like start this service. Yeah, it's a long, a long story, but uh, the short version: my grandfather was a World War II pilot. I have two uncles that fly uh, airplanes. My cousin's a military pilot. And my dad was a minister, actually. I kind of grew up in this family of service and serving others. And then having this uh, grandpa and, and family members who flew airplanes, there's kind of this aviation and service. As a 19-year-old, I went to Papua New Guinea for the first time. Saw just a tremendous need and lots of water, uh, no access uh, to for people when they had emergencies to get in. And hearing stories of people trying to get in three, four, five days and dying. With the river there and, and the water areas, it was like a seaplane could be the answer. And, you know, at the time, there hadn't been a seaplane there in over 60 years. So the vision was to go over and turn a five-day trip into a one-hour flight. We landed 65 different, run, uh, we call them runways, waterways now in Seapig. And uh, the full plane really offers that access to areas you can't get to any other way. And uh, also just with the be able to uh, quick response to bring someone in with breech bursts, uh, snake bites, all the tuberculosis, malaria, all the different things they struggle with over there. And also to get medical supplies out to these remote clinics. That's another thing that we do. And when we, we first went over there, uh, it would take three to four months to get medicine from town out to these remote communities. And we can do that in an hour flight, deliver meds right to the clinics. And so we service about 40 different aid posts wow. in the remote communities doing uh, vaccine patrols uh, uh, for kids uh, and doing uh, training with nurses and just responding to emergencies. So when there's a sickness outbreak somewhere, a cholera outbreak or uh, measles or whatever it is, uh, we're able to do quick response to that. And um, so yeah, that's what we do. I've been doing it. Uh, we started the organization in 2000 and uh, it took us 10 years to tell the story, to raise the money, to actually get there. We finally got there in 2010. I moved over there with my family and uh, my wife and three kids, put the plane together uh, out of a 40-foot container with a bag of tools and flew it into, the, into where we work today. And um, it's been an amazing, amazing adventure, and, uh, just an amazing uh, life to be able to use aviation, which is a passion, also to, to, to use service uh, and to revolutionize really how service delivery is done over there. And the cool thing is we don't charge for our flights. And so we do all this at no cost to the people. And that's really a testament to our donors, the foundations that support us, and also the Papua New Guinea government who supports us about 30% of our operating costs. And so um, it's just been a real a big team effort. You know, we've been uh, kind of the le leading edge of the spear, but it's uh, it's been a whole team effort. Now we have six families that are living in Papua New Guinea. We have two aircraft. This will be the third one going over later this year. We're looking at expanding to another part of the island in the next year. And so it really feels like uh, we're finally getting up. It's taking a long time, you know, but uh, we're super excited about the future and the capacity that we have to serve these remote communities and really just be the hands and feet of Jesus. I just love people. That's really what it's all about. All right, here we go. Let's go fly. Okay, we'll land over here up to the uh, right. Now that, that's pretty freaking cool. And you do that all the time, eh? Yeah, the cool thing about it, in New Guinea, we're on the rivers a lot of times, so it's around corners, it's uh, four feet in a footprint, you can just do so much uh, that you could never do in a wheel plane. Now what's it like flying in New Guinea in terms of like landscape and just like pilot proficiency? Yeah, so uh, Papua New Guinea, it's you know considered one of the most rugged areas. Uh, where we're at, we're the only seaplanes, and so we're dealing with a little bit of different types of challenges uh, over there. We've got a river that rises and falls up to 20 feet, so it's a thousand feet wide. It'll rise up and fall up to 20 feet in a few days. And so sometimes you'll have a, a sandbar that's you know halfway across the river, 600 feet wide, that's two, three feet deep. And then uh, the next time you come out to this village, the, the sandbar will be totally covered up. Wow. Uh, and then you'll have water rising and foam balls and big trees floating down. I've seen 100-foot trees with 50-foot roots hanging up and sticking up in the air that's floating down the river. And so uh, if you're dealing with that, you've got whirlpools, you've got fishing nets, you know, crocodiles in the water, people on their canoes paddling around that don't really know anything about airplanes. Yeah. So there's a lot of variables out there. And then you have weather, which uh, it's very volatile. It's tropical, and so it'll blow up in a, in a really quickly. Uh, so our pilots really have to, and then a lot of it's uh, emergencies. And so you have someone who's really critically ill or who's dying in the back of the plane. Uh, 
and so now you're you're trying to uh, to manage all of that and deal with someone uh, giving birth in the back of the plane or someone really struggling uh, to to get a breath or whatever it is, and so you're dealing with a lot of of dis potential distractions, and so uh, being able to make clear decisions is really a huge part uh, of our pilot skill set. You have to be a really good pilot, but you also have to be able to uh, operate under severe dis uh, duress, really, and, uh, and stress. Wow. Uh, so uh, all of our staff, it really starts with uh, loving the people. You know, it's not about going over on some amazing adventure, although it is a very adventurous. Yeah. But it's not about having this great adventure and, oh, I'm going to uh, be a hero or whatever. It's really starts with a passion for the people. And these people are these forgotten parts of the world and uh, really have have uh, no chance at life if we're not there. And so it really starts with a passion to love people, a passion to serve people. And then you get to use your passion for aviation to make a huge difference. So that, that part is really the best part. That's the magic right there, right? Yeah.